question. Uh, so, uh, uh, regarding the settlement or the arrangement of Gaza after, like Israel, whatever Israel does, let's say Israel conquers Gaza or after this war is over, we are all mulling over uh, over the question of like what happens in Gaza after the war. Like, what is the government arrangement? What is the governance, uh, civil society? So, governance arrangement, administrative arrangement in that region. Arabs are reluctant. Uh, so, I mean, do you think that uh, the international organizations, maybe say UNK, they can play some role in the reconstruction or in setting up some sort of an effective governance mechanism in Gaza after the war? You, you're asking me or the question uh, is... Uh, this is open to everyone. Uh, uh, I mean, the, you and uh, Dr. Eric, uh, whoever wants to answer, please. Yeah, sure. I mean, um, I was actually going to make some comments about that. Um, you know, even in my remarks, but, um, you know, obviously, you know, and as was mentioned by other speakers, the, the international community, uh, the UN and other international organizations can play a constructive role. Um, but I think, you know, one question we have to ask ourselves is obviously the role that the, uh, the UN and other international organizations play is critical. I mean, it's critical during this conflict. It's been critical before um, in terms of providing essential goods and services. And yet on the flip side, um, you know, some have in view, uh, have viewed these institutions and their activities as enabling, um, as was mentioned previously, an unsustainable status quo, taking the onus off of state, non-state, quasi-state actors of effective governance, of lacking the political will um, to change the political status quo, to improve the political and socioeconomic conditions on the ground. And so I think that, you know, as was stated, that while we could see uh, perhaps, and, you know, there's another question about whether there should be international peacekeeping forces like we have in Lebanon, which uh, obviously is, for, is, is highly debatable. Um, you know, there have been, I think, some pros and cons to UNIFIL's record in, on the Lebanese-Israeli border um, that we can debate and discuss. But I think ultimately, you know, this is going to come down to uh, the, the actors on the ground. Um, you know, the, uh, the Israelis, the Palestinians, I mean, right now, the position of the Israelis is that, uh, they, they want to take a long-term, uh, security position, uh, in Gaza, which, you know, the United States disagrees with, which may not be in the, in Israel's, uh, best interests from a national security standpoint. Um, and, um, and yet the question is who fills the vacuum, right? So the United States is pressing the Palestinian authority to do so with certain conditionalities. The Palestinian authority is, is weak, is illegitimate, um, has issues uh, not just in Gaza, but in, in the West Bank. Um, so the conditionalities of the US government, of the Biden administration is that, that you know, and, and speaking with Mahmoud Abbas, is that there's serious reforms that are undertaken, that there's new blood that comes into the leadership of the Palestinian Authority and Fatah uh, and the other groups. Um, that even bringing back people with experience uh, that that were in Gaza, uh, involved in governance and security pre-2011, before the elections, when Hamas took over and even forced uh, Fatah out, uh, should be considered. And yet I think the elephant in the room is going to be, how do you integrate Hamas uh, into this equation? Because, you know, despite what is Israel says, uh, you know, it, it, I think there, it's highly skeptical that you can eliminate or eradicate or dismantle a group like Hamas, whether you want to call it a terrorist organization or not. It's a multidimensional movement. It's part of the population, right? So it's, it's a very difficult, I think, a complicated situation about how, um, you know, you, you could actually have a viable uh, governance and security mechanism after this conflict, and particularly in the wake of the devastation that we're seeing on the ground. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Eric. Uh, Dr. Z, would you like to add something to what Dr. Eric said? Um, I, I, I say that like that there's a difference between what the Israeli government wants and what my position is, or the position of, of many Israelis, uh, that's one distinction that needs to be made. And the other thing that I want to reflect is the concerns from the Israeli side. First of all, the, 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 the Palestinian Authority has proven weak, lacking legitimacy within its public and corrupt, extremely corrupt. 
and there and, and it wasn't able to sustain power in Gaza last time for more than two years after the Israeli uh, evacuation. Moreover, the Palestinian Authority, irrespective of what Israel, Israel would do, and I agree that the Israeli government has done a lot to weaken the Palestinian Authority over the last decade and, and sadly so, I think that the Palestinian Authority is going to weaken even more in the coming years. And an element that is, an, an element that is, is uh, too often forgotten is the fact that Abu Mazen is 88 and, and a heavy smoker. So the, at a certain, there's no democratic elections that are, that are continuously postponed in the Palestinian Authority. So at a certain point, and I wish him a long life, at a certain point after his death, there's going to be a, a power struggle within, within the Palestinians. And uh, if, I, if, you, if I may, I'll give a very pessimistic uh, uh, outlook. That's when the real bloodshed is going to erupt because the struggle with, within the Palestinian society would very quickly uh, cross over to the Israeli side because the different factions would attack Israel in order to gain legitimacy within different elements of the, of the Palestinian society. So the worst is yet, is yet to come, I, I, I'm, I'm sad to tell. So when, when designing the day after in Gaza, we need to take into account also the day after Abu Mazen in the territories and trying to, to create some semi-stable, and I'm, I'm not very optimistic about the, even the possibility of doing so, something that would be sufficiently stable to sustain the, 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 the earthquake that would happen the day after Abu Mazen. Thank you. Thank you very much.